as you guys know when new commanders come into rise of kingdoms lately they've been coming to the chinese version of the game about two weeks earlier than the international version that you and i are playing which means the two new ninth generation archer legendary commanders have already been live in the chinese version and people have posted videos about some early results that they're seeing sort of from just testing right 1v1 3v3 5v5 testing we haven't really seen a ton of like massive or at least i haven't seen any massive kvk battles on the chinese server that use these commanders maybe it's happened and i just haven't seen a video of it but the point is that the early results for shajar specifically are a little bit underwhelming and so today we're going to talk about the ninth generation of commanders and why all of them are kind of just mid they're kind of just they're they're cooked let's be honest they're kind of cooked i mean like from an open field perspective we haven't seen a sort of must have open field commander come into rise of kingdoms since january which was herman prime another archer legendary commander so ever since then we've had 10 months we've had 10 months of commander releases and all of them have just been like kind of okay where people are like making them work in some lineups but really they have one purpose and that's to fill out a third set of commanders and so we're going to talk about that in today's video but first what's going on guys cheers now let me just be very clear in this video we're going to talk about the ninth generation of commanders as it pertains to open field combat okay which means that Cho Young with Hera in a garrison is probably going to be really good in a garrison it just it is what it is these commanders are going to work really well together and it's going to be I mean I don't know if it's going to overthrow Gorgo Hera as like the cream of the crop S tier garrison but it's going to probably be pretty close and from my own experience in my most recent KVK Eleanor does have some good uses in garrisons as well again not on the same level as Gorgo but definitely better than I thought she would be and so this video is just going to talk about open field because as we've seen we see garrison commanders that are usable I haven't seen as many CPO Emilianus reports the ones that I have seen show him being pretty good I mean he's not like he's not the rally meta but he's a good infantry rally so from a rally garrison perspective the ninth generation of commanders were fine that like they're they're solid they are improvements over previous releases but the open field commanders are kind of mid they're are kind of mid and so let's kind of talk about this for a minute and first let me just define what the ninth generation of commanders even are right because if you're new to the game and you, you haven't been playing since day one you don't really know what all the generations are the ninth generation started with Eleanor and Belisarius Prime if I can even find him here for us playing in the international version these commanders came out in the middle of May of this year so from May like 21st something like that up until now this has been five months almost almost five months something like that of the ninth generation okay so that includes obviously the two commanders we just mentioned also CPO Melianus with William Wallace who was the infantry release William Wallace obviously being the open field commander here and then the ninth generation is rounded out by the most latest release of Cho Young as the garrison and Shajar as the open field commander now it's also worth noting that the next commander release we don't really know what it is a lot of people are kind of assuming that it's going to be a ranged release but i don't think i mean it, it totally could be right i mean it makes sense we haven't seen a ranged release in a while but we've never seen the developers of rise of kingdoms go three releases between ranged i've been tracking the release order and release dates for commanders all the way back to the very beginning of the game and of course the last time that we got ranged commanders was gajamata and gonzalo that came out in february of this year and then when we look at the release cycles since the original ranged commanders we have one two three four sets of commanders two archers in that window and then we finally see the release of bobber and margaret and then going back beyond that of course we didn't have ranged but we did have a leadership set and that was one two three four five sets of commanders in between leadership and the first ever ranged leadership kind of hybrid release cycle right so we've never seen a three commander cycle release between range commanders that's not to say that it won't happen of course it, it totally could but if we assume that they're going to do four or five releases between range commanders I think probably not five maybe four possibly three then the next release could either be cavalry or it could be ranged leadership whatever but at this point I'm kind of going off on a 
tangent anyway let's jump over to the tier maker and talk a little bit more about the ninth generation of commanders because if we look at cavalry right they were the first to come out we have belisarius prime and everyone realized pretty quickly that his kit is a little bit niche it's a bit oddly specific and his main role is to swarm things down and so when you look at running him in the open field you have to ask yourself does he find himself in a two army lineup and the answer I think for most players is just no he just simply does not and the reason for that is because if we pull these aside here you're you're already running the Nevsky and the Huo and the Joan of Arc goes with one or the other and then you've got William here which is perfectly fine he's perfectly usable and you could make the argument that maybe you could replace the William with the Belisarius Prime but the downside here is that William the first can be used at 5551 whereas the main benefit for Belisarius Prime comes from the expertise so he's literally almost twice as expensive from a sculpture perspective than William but even if they're both expertise sure the expertise on Belisarius Prime will make your other armies do a little bit better but he doesn't have AoE and so most likely he's going to be dealing less overall damage than the William himself plus let's not forget that William himself buffs your other armies as well and so even though Belisarius Prime makes the target take more all damage which will cause your other armies swarming the same target to perform better you're also getting a buff from William as well so it's not like in that one regard Belisarius is clear in a way the winner there's still supportive benefits for William as well and so when we look at Belisarius Prime he's pretty niche and he would find himself most likely in a third cavalry lineup if you were going to do that and most likely it would be probably Zhang Yu with Belisarius Prime I don't really see the reason to run Justinian anymore Belisarius Prime is probably a better version of Justinian I know Justinian's a bit tanky which is nice but at the end of the day I would probably run this if I were running three cavalry armies but most players aren't running three cavalry armies and so Belisarius Prime becomes a bit of a he's a bit mid he's he's kind of cooked right like let's just be real and then we have William Wallace who I would argue is probably the most interesting of the ninth generation commanders here from an open field perspective of course and he had a lot of hype around him especially because he has a brand new talent tree he has the smite talent tree and everyone was like oh my god the smite talent tree is so insane it's broken it's gonna break the game everyone's gonna have no rage it's gonna ruin everything the game is over and that just didn't happen that's not what happened at all and in fact most players discovered that you actually don't need William Wallace because if we look at what people ran before William Wallace we had Liu Che with Alex and we had Guan Scipio and those were two perfectly fine infantry pairs and most players honestly weren't even running two sets of infantry in the first place most people would run like two archers two cavalry one infantry and in that case you had Liu Che Scipio and then you really had no reason to replace either of these commanders with with William Wallace right but even in the case where you run two commanders you're still running Liu Che with Alex Scipio behind your Guan Yu and yes you could bench the Alex and do either Liu Che William Wallace or William Wallace Liu Che I know people argue about which is better there's pros and cons to both but regardless you could bench the Alex and, and do this but from my personal test results and from the test results of basically everyone who has tested William Wallace since he's come out the Liu Che Alex either performs as good or better. I've not yet to see a person claim that a fully expertise Alex with a double relic performs worse with Liu Che than William Wallace. It just it it's just not the case. They're 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 pretty much the same, right? Now, the only reason that William Wallace, I would say, is still the most exciting open field ninth generation commander is because most players skipped Alex if they're new to the game, right? If you started playing the game one or two years ago, you probably skipped Alexander the Great on your path to season of conquest. And for those players, it probably isn't worth going back and getting Alex. I mean, it, it depends, right? But, you know, I, I prefer the Liu Che Alex, but, you know, Alex is an old commander. And so, you know, the next infantry release, if they continue down the smite path, you probably, possibly, who knows at this point, uh, might not use Alexander the Great anymore, right? And if that's the case, then you would choose William Wallace. And also, Alex does need to use relic coins and exhibit coins to make him on that level. Uh, and he also has to be expertise, which is not the case, like I said, for, for example, um, William the first here. And so I, you could make the argument that William Wallace was the most exciting for those reasons. Players skipped Alex or they didn't want to spend the relic coins or the exhibit coins on getting him to his best state possible, which is completely reasonable and fine. But at the end of the day, if you're an older player and if you're a whale player who maxes everything, you didn't need William Wallace. And so he ended up being again, a third 
army lineup, right? You would run in with somebody like Gorgo or Tarek or somebody like that, right? And you might switch up the, the lineup here a little bit, but for many end game players, you just don't need William Wallace, period. And then we finally come to Shajar and a lot of players are wondering how good she is in the open field. And again, we already see some early test results coming out of the Chinese server. And honestly, I, I I'm not super hyped about her performance in the open field. When we look at the data, it just is what it is. I think she has one good pairing and that is uh, with Joe, right? I think that is the one decent pairing that you could pair with her, but this is like kind of antithetical to what archers even care about, right? Archers care about AOE skill damage. That's like what they've always cared about. And we see Shajar does have the skill tree, which is nice. Okay. We love to see that. But when we look at what pairs are people running for archers right now, it's usually Juge Leong with Herman prime. And then we have Asher Bonopal with either Nebu or YSG. Obviously the Nebu is a little bit weaker but is a little bit faster with the march speed both of which are still five target aoe but either way you're looking at something like this or in some cases people are still running the boudica prime which i can't even find her that here she is they would be running maybe the boudica prime here which honestly i would say most high-end players have benched boudica prime right and so even in a case where we look at another single target damage archer, like sure, Sh Shajar could replace Boudica, but most people aren't even running Boudica, right? Especially not in a two army lineup. Like if you're running three, maybe depending on if you have Tamiris or, or not, right? I've been a pretty uh, anti Tamiris player. I feel like she just takes away the poison stacks in the field. And why would you want to do that? Right? So I've been pretty against using her, but some people do like her with Herman prime as a very strong poison meta. That's fine. I know a lot of high end players do that. So in a world where like Shajar is best placed to replace Boudica prime again, both of these being single target skill damage commanders, right? Because if we look at some of the results that are coming out from Shajar as secondary, you know, she provides sustain because she does healing and she provides lots of buffs to your army. But it seems to be the case that her as the primary with the skill tree and a 2800 damage factor does perform a little bit better from a trades perspective, right? Which is a little bit boring because you look at his, her entire kit from an open field perspective is built around mighty healing and dealing true damage based on that healing. And that's really cool. And I'm very excited about that. And I'm excited that we're getting new mechanics, but for an, a commander whose entire kit is built around that to look at the data and be like, okay, well, actually she performs better as primary because it throws all that out the window and it just kind of makes her a skill damage machine and like that's kind of what archers wanted right so you, you could make that argument but to argue that she's replacing Boudica it's like Boudica's already been replaced she's already been replaced by other commanders that are older than her right strictly because they have AOE skill damage and it's five target right like that's just it's just more valuable period and so when we look at Shajar it's like you could run her as an archer army but it ain't gonna be in a two army lineup most likely because Boudica wasn't even in here right and she's just like maybe a slightly better Boudica but like I, I don't know it just doesn't like from what I'm seeing and again these are early results they're test results they're not KVK results but I, I'm just not seeing a role for her in a two army archer lineup right and you know i am excited i'm gonna unlock her and we're gonna see how she does in the game but one of the reasons that you didn't see me release a, a simulator test result video for her is because she's just so unique she's just so niche she's just so interesting with her mighty healing and her true damage i felt like it just wouldn't give us an accurate understanding of how she, how good she is and this is the first commander in a very long time where i didn't do a pre-release simulator result for her because i just wasn't confident not that the simulator is wrong but it's just like we don't know what she's gonna do really right like we don't know 100 how these formulas work until she's in the game and so i didn't want to mislead people by releasing that video but the point is like you could run this as a pairing and it's going to be supportive and tanky and it's going to last newman field but that's not really what you want from archers you want high aoe skill damage which is going to give you insane trade and this is you know it's it's not really that and so it's interesting and I like it and you could run her in a third army lineup would you run show maybe maybe not honestly you would probably run something like this like something along these lines makes sense to me because Shajar is faster in in general than some of these other commanders and so you would want her to be paired with arguably the slowest of the lineup which is YSG right it's not even the arguable that's actually the case I know technically outside of territory this army would be faster of course right um but in your own territory and in general the 20 percent here is better than the 15 percent conditional on ashurbanipal right so i mean you've got something like this you could run this as a three army lineup if you wanted to but like again we find ourselves in a scenario where the ninth generation commander is a third army pairing commander it seems right and again she's not in the international version yet but i mean 
she's going to function the same in our version as she does in the Chinese version. And there's no like magical difference there. But even without Shajar, you could have run something like this for a three army archer lineup anyway, and it would have been just fine. Right. And so at the end of the day, she seems to be a third army pair period that just is what it is and so what does this mean for the ninth generation of commanders well first of all this is amazing for free-to-play players right I mean this is really what you want as a free-to-play player 10 months of saving sculptures I mean that's the golden age like that is ideally what you want players and especially free-to-play players have been arguing that commanders are coming out too fast there's too much power creep whatever well great news you can skip literally this entire generation and you're fine you can keep using all the old stuff and you're still Gucci you can still use commanders from a very long time ago such as William the first such as Nevsky such as Guan Yu and Scipio right you can even make use of Alexander the Great and and YSG if you really wanted to run three archers but most free-to-play players are not doing that and I you shouldn't but my point is that you know for free-to-play players this is awesome you've had a whole generation that you can skip and save up for whatever is coming next but for the rest of us for the low mid and high end you know and high spend players I'm a little bit bored I'm a little bit bored I'm just gonna be honest I don't this whole generation seems like it was a it was mid it was cooked the whole generation is cooked boys okay here's the thing though this could be setting up the game for what's coming later right so down the line we could see more true damage archers that make these archers even more insane we could see more smite damage commanders that make William Wallace insane and we could see something somehow that pairs well with Belisarius Prime that just makes him insane but until then the entire ninth generation it's not it's not happening I'm not seeing it it's not popping off so while it's good for the free to play players because they can save their sculptures they don't need these guys they can keep running the older things and and finish off and feel good about finishing off some of those older commanders but for the rest of us you know I have 1512 legendary commander sculptures and that's with me expertising William Wallace that I didn't need to do and that's with me putting 5515 into Gorgo which I also did not need to do and so I've wasted like a thousand of sculptures basically I've wasted over a thousand sculptures on commanders that I might not ever use right like I don't actually have an open field use for them like at this point I'm thinking I'm just going to expertise Gorgo in my Constantine just to be like a a C tier garrison in my kingdom right just just in case like maybe might as well I don't know why not right I've got some special talents on the gear here okay I've got some some high iconic levels on a couple of the pieces like I mean I'm not going to be a tier one player I'm not going to be the best in the kingdom but like it's okay right it's fine like I could be a backup garrison at like you know if it's seven in the morning and a lot of our international players are going to bed and a lot of our North American players haven't woken up yet like maybe I could be a, a decent backup garrison in those scenarios right but besides that like I as a as a uh a sort of I would say like maybe a mid spender like I don't have anything exciting to work on right now and I haven't since we got Herman Prime which is like what a, what are we doing boys like this is crazy it's been a, it's been 10 months I want something new to play with like we've released these new formations and we've released all this stuff and like I don't know what I'm gonna do with them like what am I gonna do with this I don't this is not this 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 to me right to me it's not content that I I don't see a reason to invest in it right now right like sorry I know that the tier maker is still here but like it, it just to me doesn't seem like uh these are these are formations that uh I am necessarily interested in when I don't really see a set of commanders that like really thrives off of these things I think down the line like cavalry the next generation cavalry is it going to be combo damage maybe or they could just keep putting like combo attacks on smite damage commanders like Liu Che down the line and this just becomes like the new meta for infantry right but like I don't know I don't know it seems like the ninth generation was completely focused on just putting in new rally and garrison commanders that are decent but the open field versions the open field commanders that released this gen all seem to be cooked brother they seem to be cooked we're still using the old stuff great news for free to play but a little bit uh a little bit underwhelming for the rest of us let me know what you guys think about the ninth generation of commanders are you happy that they've been all kind of mid that way you didn't need any of them are you still holding out for Shajar wondering like maybe her in-game real world kvk results will be insane with somebody like Cho in the open field possibly who knows but for me things are looking a little bit bleak from an open field perspective at least from a new and interesting perspective in terms of saving sculptures and using your old stuff 
it's all the same but again it just feels a little bit boring right like not not that kvks are boring the game is still fun and i'm still enjoying it it's just that i i want something new i want the meta to change right like it i as a content creator i can't make a video that says you know this is the the new best tier list and this is the new best open field pairs and this is new like because it hasn't changed in a year so like what am i going to talk about what am i going to do make the make the exact same video as i did 10 months ago like that's just i don't know i don't like maybe i should do that just to like remind you guys that nothing's changed but like that seems a little bit weird right like i want commanders that are going to change everything and maybe that's what they're saving the 10th generation four maybe Ragnar Prime has something to do with the next generation of commanders maybe we're about to see a big power spike because really the last massive power spike we saw was like the sixth generation with like Nevsky right like those guys were insane we got CPO Prime like think of it like this the sixth generation of commanders had Nevsky it had CPO Prime and it had Boudica Prime who is arguably you know she's the weakest of the three but she's still like she can be used for sure that was a great generation maybe the 10th generation is also going to be another step up in terms of power for these commanders i hope it is honestly because if you're a free-to-play player then great news you've had basically i mean by the time the next set of commanders comes out i'm guessing it's going to be a mid-december release i'm predicting december 17th is going to be the next set of commanders and it's either going to be you know some sort of ranged release with Ragnar Prime or it's going to be a cavalry release and Ragnar Prime is going to be like his own separate thing if it's a ranged release then it's like there's still there's still not going to be anything to invest in there unless you finally want to bite the bullet and go down the, the ranged route which a lot of players have this year because they've just had nothing else to work on right and that's probably the right play if you saw Belisarius Prime and said no thanks I'm going to go ranged you have probably made the right choice right building your seven army as a ranged army was probably the way so we'll have to wait and see what the 10th generation of commanders holds I think what I want to see is I want to see in December I want to see them release the 10th generation calves and I want to see a Nevsky 2.0 or I want to see a Joan of Arc Prime 2.0 right I want to see a double prime Joan like that's the level of commander that I personally want to see I want to see the 10th generation just completely shake things up. I want to see the entire meta change over the course of the next six to 12 months, because I want new things to invest in older free to play players have had a year or 10 months of time to save up sculptures. That's plenty of time to invest in, you know, two new legendary commanders, something like that. Hopefully we see the 10th generation be something insane. But for right now, ninth generation looks cooked. It looks pretty mid from an open field perspective. And I want to know what you guys think about that in the comment section below. Is that good for the game? Is it bad for the game? Let me know what you think down there. And while you're down there, drop a thumbs up on the video. It really helps out the channel a ton. It helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Rise of Kingdoms players might see it. And while you're down there, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch, and we'll talk to you guys again soon. Peace.